What is up everybody? It's me, Pre-Sale Project, I'm back again with another video. Uh, sorry for the noise, the air conditioning's running because it is literally 3,000 degrees outside. That's why I'm dressed like a bum. But I got my vintage camel cigarette shirt on, straight from a yard sale. Uh, you know, when we start picking stuff and it don't sell very well, sometimes we've got to wear it. But on this video, we're going to be talking about feedback and how annoying feedback can be. I actually shot a whole video, a 30 minute video, uh, dedicated to this, but I didn't like the way that it came out. It sounded like I was being too robotic, uh, not very personable, I guess you could say is the word, when it comes to talking about feedback because it's such a touchy subject. But I decided to scrap that video because I want to be real with you guys. Uh, there's a few things I have here on my notes that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about some funny examples and things like that. So the first thing is, thank you for watching the video. Uh, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you already haven't. I'm trying to trying to build this channel, trying to make some useful eBay stuff here for everybody, uh, whether it's a, a beginner with eBay or a brand new seller, <laughs> a beginner with eBay or somebody that's been selling for 20 years, what I meant to say. Uh, I'm trying to do it for everybody. Uh, I'm not a teacher, but, but learn from my mistakes. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this video is because I had a terrible experience with feedback. And that's exactly what I want to get into with these notes. So let's take a look of how this plays out to make sure you don't have to deal with this. You probably will, but how you can do it a little bit better than you thought you might have to. So what happened with the feedback that made me want to make this video? That's the first thing. So right out of the gate, I want to tell you exactly what happened to me. And here's what happened. So I got a negative feedback. I sold a $14 personal air conditioner. Very cheap item, just a little square. You put water in, plug it into a USB, and it's supposed to cool you down. You know, a normal person, a normal buyer, a normal seller would say for $14, you know, this thing's probably going to, at best, cool a six by six cubicle or something, whatever. Well, the negative feedback was literally doesn't work any more or any less. That's all they said. What does that mean? It doesn't work any more or any less than a $10,000 home unit or a unit in a car you know I was kind of baffled and I sent a message to him I was like hey you you know I, I had some revision requests you get five starting out then five per a thousand in a calendar year so I, I sent a message and I was like hey uh, what what do you mean it didn't work anymore or any less uh, they didn't respond so I sent a, a third or a second final message I said hey before I reach out to eBay I would just like you know I don't care to send my revision requests I can get more I'm trying to bank up thousands of reviews so it's okay if I get that but I wanted them to tell me like, hey, you know, what's going on? Obviously, I didn't think this was a $4,000 item that I'm selling for $14. So I was trying to figure out, you know, why didn't they like it or whatever, still nothing back. So I sent a message. So here was my mistake. And here's tip number one in this video. Don't ever submit anything via automated system is right on my notes. And here's why. Uh, I, I copied the transaction on the item and then the messages and I copied and pasted all that into the feedback revision form with eBay and honestly I figured they would be like yeah I agree with you you know because that that feedback uh, doesn't work any more or any less that's all it said so technically so let's break that down so technically that means it doesn't work any more or any less technically that means I described it perfect it doesn't work any more than they said it would it doesn't work any less than they said it would so technically the feedbacks or the, the the description I used was perfect to them. So I sent that all off to the automated system, the feedback revision form. But then I got to thinking, I was like, I don't know, you know, I don't really trust that. So I called eBay and I said, Hey, this is the feedback that I received. Uh, this is how I take it. Obviously, it, this is a little bit strange because it doesn't really make any sense. Because what are they comparing it to? And that's what I put in my. Uh, response to the automated system doesn't work any more any less compared to what and I'm putting quotation mark question mark what you know what does that mean uh, the person on the phone absolutely yeah you're, you're a top rated seller you're exactly right we should remove that no problem okay so six hours go goes by uh, it's still on the account and I have no email response from the automated system I'm like okay usually it, it if you're dealing with eBay and they say they're going to do something, it's usually going to happen within the first 12 hours. If it don't, you got to call back or get somebody else in the line. So then 12 hours goes by, 
Uh, I got the message at seven in the morning, so I sent, so seven in the afternoon, I called them back like, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we agree with you, it should be off of there. So I'm, I'm still waiting. So then I get an email that says, based on what you've submitted to us, we do not agree with your assessment. We cannot remove the feedback and then immediately five probably 30 seconds after i got that i got a message from the person i talked to on the phone 12 hours ago six hours ago that said uh, an email message and on my ebay message that's like hey my name is ryan i'm so happy to tell you that we reviewed the issue and we're going to remove it okay so so there i'm like okay so what's going on you know i've been through this a million times that's why i'm making the video so you don't have to deal with this and that's why all that leads up to tip number one is don't ever submit anything via an automated system until you talk to somebody or Facebook for business and get that in an email form. Always, 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 because you're gonna have a leg to stand on. Uh, that leads to get it all in writing, which is the email form. And that's exactly what happened on this issue. So after the 24 hours had passed, I woke up, it was still on my account. I'm like, dude, this is, this sucks. I hate this. I hate dealing with this. It takes out hours of my day, whatever. So I call eBay back. I'm like, look, I have the email confirmation that you guys said you would remove it. I didn't emote anything about the one that said you didn't, you couldn't remove it, whatever, because that's just going to make them argue back. So the, the key here is like, that's why I said get it all in writing because once they say, hey, yeah, absolutely, we're going to work with you. I mean, like any person, you can send that email to a million people and be like, dude, are you just not going to do what you say or what's going on here? So everybody that talked to me after that's like, yeah, we see the message. We see the message. Here's a tip that's a little bit, I don't, I don't think it's a gray area. It's just something I did that, that made me feel like it was worth my while. I deleted the, uh, we can't remove it from your account sure they probably have sent messages but i deleted that straight from my inbox and i said check my inbox they said they're going to delete it that's what happened so then after 24 hours uh they they did remove it so that was good so that's that leads me to my next topic so so to recap first of all don't submit anything ever to those feedback revisions uh the vero program don't don't submit anything until you can get something first in writing about like what the Bureau thing is, hey, if you submit to them and they don't respond to you, then sure we can look into it. Get that first before sending anything off. Because, you know, with the feedback with the Bureau, you wanna work your ass off for, you know, 10, 12 hours, and then you won't get an answer back and they're like, oh, sorry, we're not gonna, we're not gonna abide by that. We didn't say we would do that. So always reach out in writing, email, Facebook through Messenger, whatever, uh, even though it's just a, an, uh, an agent, whatever, they feel obligated to withhold or uphold what they said. So that this is 2021 July. I can't speak for the past or the present, but right now that's what we're going through. If somebody tells you something on Facebook Messenger or through email or through chat uh, via Messenger, your eBay, they're going to, they're definitely for some reason, I don't know, maybe to keep public perception good, they're going to stick to that. So it's up to you though first to get those answers in writing. Okay, so you get a Vero. This is a, away from the feedback, but you get a Vero, right? S reach out to eBay, say, hey, if I can show this company this or this or this, can we talk about this strike on my account? They may never respond to you, but if they do, and they say, yeah, sure, and then you respond to that company a hundred times, your chances of beating that Vero or are a million percent better than they were when you first started out just saying, hey, I don't deserve this Vero. This is bull crap. You know, I don't like this. So always get this stuff in writing. You know, I'm not saying that me or you are going to spend $50,000 in small claims court to fight this. We're not. But this is a good way to at least start the process in removing this stuff. And we're specifically talking about feedback. I'll do a Vero video later. So the first tip is don't ever submit anything via the automated system. The second tip is get it all in writing. And the third tip is what we're talking about right now in just one second. So one of the key things that I've been able to use to my advantage is a feedback extortion policy, which I'm going to read right now to you. 
Buyers cannot use the threat of negative or promised positive feedback to get a seller to provide goods or services that weren't included in the original item's description or purchase price. Similarly, they can't use feedback to force a seller to accept a return or give a refund if they're not required to by the terms of their listing or eBay money back guarantee. Now there's more on that web page, but what does that mean to me, to you, the real world? So I get this message all the time, all the time. We're selling, you know, hundreds of items a week and I get this all the time. Uh, let's, let's just say that I write in a description, box has shelfware, uh, show signs of use or, or people touching or using the box because it's been in a store because I own a retail store too. And everything's listed. So if a person wants to come in and touch a, a, an action figure and they crease the side, I take a picture of that obviously, I make it very, very aware. So here's what I get though. They'll, I'll, I'll send the action figure out, say it's there. And, and I had this on a Funko Pop. There was a, a crease in the plastic, which I took a photograph of, uh, highlighted in the description. They knew it was there. So I get a message back, hey, this crease is worse than I thought it was. Okay, so my next message to them was, sent a, a, a screenshot of the crease and said, hey, it was pictured in the, the listing. Is there anything that I can help make this a positive experience for you? They write back, well, I don't care to give you a positive uh, review if you refund this. Now listen, so technically that's feedback extortion. Now I'm not saying I'm a freaking sleaze ball and I'm trying to get them to say that. That's not the case. So if I sold a $50 Funko Pop and the crease was worse than they thought, will I refund them 10 to $15? Absolutely, just because I want to do that. Now, do I know when people are taking advantage of me? I know that too. So if they knew they were buying that Funko with that damage, but they want a loose one for their collection, but they don't want to pay what they paid, you're going to have that. You're going to have this on anything. You're going to have people fishing for refunds a lot of the time when you become a top rated seller with selling a lot of stuff. So let's say that this would be a, a perfect addition to their loose Funko collection, right? They see the damage, they don't want to pay $50 or whatever it was, they want to pay $30. Well, they see me offer $45, I accept it, they get it, they're like, hey, if you'll refund me $15, you know, I'll leave you a positive. That is completely feedback extortion because it says what's not in the original item's description. So if you're being a, truthful and honest and, and a good seller and you write the damages there these people don't have a leg to stand on and this was a negative feedback that i actually beat in the last six months that's why i bring this up had a funko pop had a dent in the uh, plastic part of it they said hey uh this is way worse than i thought it was i took there was 12 pictures used the the maximum limit that anybody says six of those were over that dent you know i, I completely the description even said this is perfect for a loose collector the box is in no shape or form good for a collection because i'm a collector you can see right there i collect stuff so i know how to sell that stuff but they were trying to fish it up and they're fishing on me uh, they said well you give me 15 dollars back and it's just 15 dollars for the the sake of my account i would have gave it back but i knew exactly what they were doing 15 dollars is not worth me losing a uh, negative feedback or getting my account one of my accounts off of top rated so you know i just did some digging i just sent a message back i was like sent the picture of the uh the, the listing with the description i said hey highlighted this a million times tried to show you guys i don't care to give you you know five to ten dollars back but 15 to 20 dollars back on this you know can you work with me at all they're like well no we don't want to work with you or we're going to give you negative feedback so they were trying to use this their system that they're reading that i read you against me uh, if they would have just said that they would take the $10, $15, I would have done it. But at that point, I was like, let's, let's just see what happens. So they left me a negative feedback, you know, obviously. Sent all the stuff to eBay. Here's the deal, though. I didn't send it to the revision request form. I didn't send anything. I actually got a hold of them on the phone, showed them everything, and they were able to resolve that for me. So the first step in combating negative feedback is to be very, very familiar with the policies if you can go onto them uh, onto the ebay website and absolutely just break down which i which i'm very proud of myself because i read these policies every day even if they change them if you can go back and copy and paste this stuff and send it back to feedback for business or ebay for business and all that stuff 
you're going to have a leg up on everything. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen every time. I, I won't say it because I, I lose cases all the time that I should win. But that's eBay. You know, that's online sales. That's, that's where we are. I'm just trying to show you what I do to give you a leg up. So once I sent the buyer can't use threat of negative feedback, which I didn't use that. Similarly, though, they can't use feedback to promise positive feedback if they give a refund, a refund. So that's where I was like, uh, so with six pictures of the listing dedicated to that damage, and then them also sending the message fishing for the refund saying, hey, things were shaky, but I'll give you a positive refund if you're a good boy, you know. You know, 99% of the time I'd be like, screw it, I'm just gonna just give them the $15 and call it a day. But I was just really kind of like, let's test these eBay policies. And that's, that's sadly, like I said in the beginning of, of the video, where you run into issues because eBay will say um, those policies and if you got proof, you might get an email saying, we're not gonna reverse this. You might call somebody and say, we're gonna reverse it. If you, uh, eBay for business, uh, we're not gonna reverse it. You send somebody else an, uh, a message on eBay for business, we'll reverse it. eBay's policy on feedback, sadly, is so antiquated when it comes to reselling that they got to fix this system. We know that, you know it, I know it. But these are the tips that I have. And I use the, the Funko thing because it's a, it's a very popular selling item. Uh, I love Jesse uh, with RVA Flips. I, I belong to their Facebook group. He says a lot of stuff like that. He has a lot of issues with, with some feedback from that type of stuff. Uh, he's such a great guy. All these guys are good guys uh, in that group. And that's why I bring that up. Because when these people are trying to use you and abuse you to get, a lot of times you're gonna find this with collectibles, toys, um, not necessarily video games so much, but that type of stuff, you're gonna see some, some scummy people pop up you know, even if your listing's accurate, the description's accurate, you got six or eight pictures with the damage on there. If they're collecting an item, say they're a loose collector. So let's go to wrestling figures. That's something I love so much, wrestling figures. I've sold probably $50,000 in wrestling figures over my career. It's one thing I've dealt with forever. You know, you accurately describe the condition, the box, everything. If they're loose collectors, that's where you wanna run into a lot of issues. If they're loose collectors, you're always going to run into this, like, hey, you know, I, I, this was a gift, or I was buying this for the box, or whatever. Uh, I know you described it perfectly in your, your your description. The pictures were perfect. The box was just bad. Was worse than I thought it was. Then you're thinking, you just said it was was accurately described, so I don't have to do anything else. Sadly, I've been victim of that a lot, and I just issue them the refund just to not deal with these people. But the, the truth is, if you're just starting out with a two five a $200, $500, $1,000 budget, and you're really hoping these sales make it, that could be a damaging blow if you're selling a $200 elite wrestling figure or a, a Hasbro uh, WWF figure from the, the 80s. You know, that's a big thing because you'll see these loose collectors prey on uh, in-box items and they'll say it wasn't described, whatever, and they're, they're hoping you say, yeah, I'll just give you the refund just to make this go away. But sometimes, I want to tell you this, this is my final advice here. Sometimes it's worth fighting this. Like I said, if you don't ever submit anything in writing uh, via the automated system, if you get it all in writing and you use keywords in their policies, uh, don't, don't be so quick to give that $30 refund, that $20 refund, that $100 refund. What if you have a men on card Hulk Hogan from the 80s it's worth 250 bucks and somebody gets it all they want it for is to be loose on their on their detolf right there what if that's what they want but then they get it and they say oh this this is bad this this the curvature of the card is not what you said it was i'm leave, leaving you negative feedback unless you give me 75 dollars back they wanted it at a loose price anyways that was their whole entire intent now you're the whipping boy for their extortion according to eBay policy, or you can accept a return, which they're going to return and then leave you negative feedback. But if you just give them $75, you get a positive feedback, you made $100 and you don't have to worry about eBay. So pick your own battles. I'm not saying do it every time, but at the same time, 
I'm tired of dealing with people like this. So I'm taking a stand. I hope you take a stand. I hope you're, you're selling a million items a day. And I hope that you, if you get a return a week, you're saying, well, let's, let's talk about it. You know, this is to reputable sellers who sell the right thing, not drop shippers. This is to people who are really looking at their items and making sure that it's the right thing. So let's, uh, what I hope eBay sees with this YouTube community is that we're doing the right thing, but still buyers are still abusing that system. I personally think that the eBay feedback system is antiquated. I think the Mercari system is antiquated. I don't think there even needs to be a feedback system on Amazon, uh, eBay, or Mercari. And personally, this is the reason why. If you get your item good and you're happy, good. If you don't, open a return. Even if it's a, an item not described or whatever, open that return. 99% of the time, we have to accept it anyways. Why leave that extra room to, to tarnish our accounts? You see what I'm saying? Feedback, like if, if, the, if the item is going to be bought and or returned, no matter what the say we have, this is not like a he said, she said type of transaction. That's so early 2000s to me personally. I know a lot of you won't feel the same way. Some of you might, but the feedback system is very antiquated in the way that it it's, you know, let me show you this. Now this is not my account, but this is almost laughable to me. This person sold mustaches, self-adhesive, costume party, mailman, fake beard, mustache, black one piece. He got a negative feedback because it says itchy. Now that, that's almost laughable. This guy has... I can't scroll up, I just screenshot this. I don't want you to know who it is or what's going on. Uh, this is not me, but this is almost laughable because a, a mustache that's, <laughs> Jesus, come on. An itchy fake mustache, who would have ever thought? So that's what I'm telling you, do your due, due diligence. Uh, try to be a good seller, but at the same time, fight for what what's right and let's make eBay fix this issue. Again, thank you guys for subscribing, liking the videos, comment, anything I can help you guys with. Uh, I love you guys and just, you know, keep up with the channel. I'm trying to grow it. I'm here for you guys. Thank you.